All right, what, what, what is good? Oh, sure, you went from being able to see me. I'm in the shadow. Wow, I'm the shadow black man. Anyway, welcome to the Sci-Fi Express Lane. I'm Jeff Carroll, science writer, science fiction writer extraordinaire. Got to build my confidence up and maintain, right? Um, and I'm here to express myself on the sci-fi hit the theme music do 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 express myself on the sci-fi express lane Woo! let me go in because i only take 15 minutes <laughs> or less or more but it's around it's 15 minutes ish all right so um i wanted to talk to you all about my um the best science fiction show Wow, maybe say ever. How about that? Wow, never gave it that title before. But it's the best science fiction show on TV right now. And probably the best science fiction show on TV like ever. Okay? Wow. That just means we're getting better and I have no problems with that. Okay, so that show is The Expanse. Picked up, I think it started on um, Sci-Fi Channel. And then it got picked up on, and now it's on Amazon Prime. And I think you can even watch it on Netflix. I'm not sure, right? Um, so it's season six, first episode, and um, dudes are, have weaponized space rocks. As, not really asteroids, because asteroids already moving, but um, the dudes are throwing rocks at Earth. It's a crazy, beautiful sci-fi. Homegirl is relaxing in a gravity uh, zero like chair. You know how we have uh, vertical chairs where you can go upside down and put your head down? She's in a gravity free type experience. It's not a chair, but it's like experience. So that's like really cool. So that's some things that like fascinated me um but my overall reaction is i'm loving the show um i um think it's beautiful that it's so diverse but i saw one thing in a couple of things right so the belters i heard playing what i think is like either reggae tone or just reggae um it's not hip-hop it's reggae and I think the writer, and I have to Google this up, but I think the writer is from um, Europe, right? I think it's from um, London, Britain, whatever. And um, I think, you know, maybe since they don't have like African Americans over there, that's their go-to for black people diversity. You know, because they used to have Jamaica as a colony and some of the Barbados and some of these other uh, black countries as colonies, right? So, um, maybe that's their go-to. Like, if an American writer was to write some black people in space, they may have hip-hop. So, maybe that's maybe that's why. Anyway, I don't know how I feel about it. But, you know, so, I don't know how I feel about the Belters playing, um, what do you call it? A reggae a uh, reggaeton type music, right? Um, because they're already a, a more diverse, they're all diverse, don't get me wrong, but they seem Indian, right? Um, uh, not, yeah, Indian, not Native American Indian, but like Indian Indian. And um, what do you call it? And I'm just like, yo, that's interesting. So what are you trying to say? Like, I don't know if they have white leaders in this one, um, but they certainly have leaders of color within their resistance. So there's some type of analogy in there that's muttered um, by, um, uh, what do you call it, um, by the diversity. So it's not a clear, you know, Europe, American, um, diversity as as it is um, in other science fiction books 
probably David Weber's um, series. Um, but in this one, it's it's in there. It seems like it's in there. It's in the, they're saying a group of feels like a group of, of, of people of color have are the resistance, right? The Belters are that colony. So I'm picking up on that on the analogy because you know a lot of us write in analogies. You know what I'm saying? So if you pick up on the analogy, you may pick up on the message um, that they're trying to put out. So um, I'm feeling that it, I'm, I'm, I'm picking up. I might have picked up on it before, but you know the other thing, we six seasons deep. This is a long arcing, developing story that I don't even know if they'll they'll wrap up in this six seasons. So this dude. Um, I'm not. I don't remember his name, but his Leviathan Wakes series that became The Expanse is a big series. So I don't necessarily feel that it's going to wrap up in this season. Um, maybe it'll go seven seasons. It could go ten, right? And I don't see it giving out of steam because it's that much. It's that much range. However, one thing you risk by writing long books long stories in general is people you know it takes a long time to get it um to for people to read it over time in their lives and they may have to take notes and stuff you know um i don't know if harry potter necessarily had this problem and i don't think star wars has this problem because the stories are very simple they don't you know, they star wars involves a lot of characters get don't get me wrong but they do trilogies, you know what I'm saying? So it's bite-sized, bite-sized stories. With the belt, um, with the expanse, you got the same characters you run it through. You might not even know who they are until the, the fourth season, you know what I'm saying? So it's a it's a, 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 a nice written story that I'm glad survived all type of cancellations. But that's the fear that you run into, but that's the risk you take when you write. A story with long story arcs is, yo, know, people, you know, the people that put it out, you know, may cancel you. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's the risk that you run. So um, I'm just happy the Expanse has continued getting the green light. Um, I want to give it as much uh, support as I can. Um, because I like it and I think it's a really good conversation that is starting. Um, so, like for me, I am uh, I'm scared of my stories getting uh, canceled, in, at least in comic books. Um, so that's why I was writing a lot of uh, one shots. You know, the same characters, but you get everything you need in that story. I'm in the process now of writing some longer story arcs. Planet of Kibalon is one of them. And then I'm doing The Last Harlemite, which is going to probably be four to six books. Uh, we'll see probably how the first book hits. Um, if y'all like it as much as I like it, boom. So now back to The Expanse. So because they got these long story arcs, or because they have this um, these belters um, developing, because the belters are a, a group of characters that over the seasons you learn more and more about. So when I first when you first introduced to them in the season one, you didn't really know who they were. You heard Colony, and you know I didn't really pick up on the analogy. Now I'm like, wow, all right. So it's interesting that they are making them sort of black Caribbean, even an African colony, an Indian colony. Because you know the British had colonies all over the world, and they was colonizers. They they ran this place called Earth, you know, years ago, you know, or at least they attempted to. Whether they ever did, I don't know, but they certainly attempted to do that, um, and they had a strong global empire. Now, I think a lot of science fiction is, uh, analogizes, if that's a word, analogizes what they tried to do on Earth, and, um, that's interesting, but a lot of people don't always pick up on the analogies because a lot of people aren't students of world history the way uh, Europeans are, you know because they're in the driver's seat. So they look at all of us, America, Australia, India, Caribbean places, as colonies. We, we look at them as, yeah, where the white people came from, you know what I'm saying? 
and we don't look at them as um, the big colonizers, right? Um, as they were referred to, you know, like Africans are clearly capable and do so very well at calling them colonizers. So that's interesting. So I like to, you know, and so then the conversation is, what are these colonizers doing to Earth? They're throwing rocks at it. They're throwing so many rocks at Earth that Earth may not continue. You understand? It may not be the same. Um, and that's a sad scenario. You know, it's, you know, they're definitely all descendants of Earth. They embrace that in season one, that they are descendants of Earth. And that's all well and good. But they had trouble in their um, running of these expanded areas like Mars and the Milky Way, the belt, you know, where all these belters come from. So what is that analogy? Is that saying that, you know, Jamaica would come back and, and lead a war against Europe? No, it's saying that, that, that may, they may have feared that. You know what I'm saying? When we, you know, when I talk about racism, I talk about the fear of black people. That's it. That's my easiest way to explain it to people because then you understand why black people and other people can or cannot be racist, right? So um, I just think there is an in there. I don't know, but when you oppress somebody, you do wrong things to them, then then they have. Uh, then you sometimes fear that they're going to do the same thing to you. I don't know that. I'm not an oppressor. I haven't taken advantage of people. So I don't really know that. I treat people the way I like to be treated. So maybe that's the reflection of that other feeling that I have not felt because I haven't done wrong to people. Um, but maybe that's what they're feeling. I don't know. However, we got to recognize that's their fear. You understand? Whether it's true or not, whether you have felt that way or not, that's their fear. You know what I'm saying? So the Milky Way or the belt or whatever, I don't know if it's the Milky Way. I just know it's the asteroid belt. Um, I think it's outside of Jupiter. Okay. I'm not sure what planet. I'm not sure the geographics. Uh, I don't know if they call it geographics in space. The space graphics, right? The space map of expanse. Either way, I don't think they found humans on Mars, and I don't think they found humans on the belt planets or belt places that they live, because they live on big asteroids like the size of Earth. Many of them have atmospheres. I don't know how they terraform them, but I don't think the people are indigenous, like in Doom, those people that Zania, um, Zendaya uh, represents, I don't think they're indigenous. I don't think the people in Foundation are indigenous to the planets that they go to populate. So I don't think they, they don't have the same claim on the land as indigenous people do when you talk about the Taino or the Carib or the, uh, 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 the, the um, what's the ones in Africa? The Igbo, the, 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 the um, Ashanti right or the Zulu or the various other tribes or the Cherokee or the um, Cree right all those different Indian tribes or tribes that they call Indians right um, they have a different stake on the land because they actually live there right then uh, people like the Belters so in, the, in the essence that analogy doesn't necessarily hold true so their fear is sort of projected right um, on those people from those places because to say a bohemian or a, uh, a Jamaican would rise up and destroy Europe because they formerly colonized them is not correct if you're using the analogy from the expanse because that they're not indigenous. Um, wow, so I took a long time to explain that. And I don't want to really beat it too much more, but um, I think I got my thought out. The other thing that I was just sad about is that nobody in these higher level cultures, um, 
moves towards peace. Like the Native Americans, and I'll just use them as an example, they learned how to have different tribes and so solve their war and conflicts without developing atomic bombs and having a, a, a tribe of just warring people who don't do anything except to devote, devote their intelligence towards bombs and destruction making conquering weapons. Native Americans didn't do that, right? They developed a council of tribes that was so good that they used that Europeans used that to make their 13 colonies to come up with nation states, to come up with regional and geo and local leadership that have representatives to a higher council. They didn't have that in medieval times, okay? They didn't have that. They had governors. Everybody was appointed by the king and the queen, which were the monarchy, and they weren't elected. So don't let them get it twisted. They got this level of tear up democracy from the Native Americans. And it's just, and it was a way that they learned to live harmoniously. And one of the sad things about science fiction is we have two things. We have a utopian future and a dystopian future. Because even continuing with the stupidity that we have, like Expanse seems to be doing, is dystopian. Because I'm not staying stuck on stupid. We are stuck on stupid in this planet um, right now. And we weren't always this stupid. You know, the, the, the Africans learned to live thousands of years without having developing human killing weapons and sciences and developing all of their technology for the destruction of their enemies. That is new. We haven't always lived like that. So that's post the Roman era, okay? So I don't know what projection they are putting on humans, but that is a devolution of the human mind and it is dystopian. So I'm sad when I see that in The Expanse. I'm sad when I see that in uh, The Foundation. I'm sad when I see it, well I don't expect more from Star Wars and Star Trek, but I'm sad when I see it in all of those. At some point, we gotta figure out how we have, how we evolve, and how we even go back to what we once were. How about that? Anyway, um, utopians are not boring stories. I will demonstrate that with the stories that I write. No doubt. Been in here too long. Thank you for your time. Sci-Fi, Express Lane, I'm out.